I don't think there's an official guidebook for gangland fugitives, but if there is, I'm sure that one of the rules is that when you're on the run, don't use the name of a known criminal as your fake identity. And another might be that once you've found a good safe hiding spot, don't pose for newspaper photos using the criminal's name. Even if you're really, really proud of the pizzeria you've started in your new life. Don't get me wrong. I do appreciate fugitives making mistakes that allow me to make a new video. But this one? Really, this is just embarrassing. The mob reporter here with quick news of another Italian mafia fugitive. This one captured on February 2nd, 2023. The killer in a double hit successfully kept off the radar for 16 years. Let me tell you about it. Edgardo Greco 63, is named as a member of the Indrangheta, the powerful mafia born in the southern Italian region of Calabria. That's the toe on the boot-shaped map of Italy. Greco was muscle for his clan and was hailed for his bravado for trying to stab the boss of his clan's rivals while they were in prison in the 1980s. His attempt was unsuccessful but still appreciated and it led to accolades and promotion. Once back outside, he took his place as a loyal soldier in Cosenza, a city of about 200,000 people. In 1991, he was involved in a double hit. The victims were two men, Giuseppe Bartolomeo, 30, and his brother Stefano, 28. They were both mobsters themselves. Those two brothers were arrested for killing a prison warden in 1985, but when they emerged from jail, they were bitter over their place in the clan and went rogue. It sparked a mafia war that featured ambushes, betrayals, and death. The Bartolomeo brothers were eventually lured to a meeting to discuss peace terms with the clan. It was, of course, a trap. Their end wasn't pretty. Four or five mobsters, Greco among them, beat the pair with metal drive shafts inside a fishmonger's office. Their bodies were never found. Court heard testimony from turncoat informants that the mobsters poured acid on their remains, during which they found one was still alive. Greco was arrested after that. He flirted with becoming an informant, but in the odd, slow way of Italian justice, wasn't convicted for the murders until 2006. He was given a life sentence, but fled. Greco eventually made his way across the Alps to France, and by about 2014 he had found a good place to hide, in saint étienne It's a city with a regional population of some 400,000 people, about 35 miles southwest of Lyon. Now every fugitive needs a cover story and a new name. Greco's cover was working as a pizza chef in a restaurant near the city's main railway station. He chose as his new identity that of Paolo Dimitrio, he had bigger dreams, though, and in June 2021, he opened his own restaurant near the city center called Cafe Rossini Ristorante, offering traditional Italian cuisine. Working as a chef might have been a good idea. I've found in my experience a lot of Mafia members are great cooks, or at least have fine taste in food and drink. Here he is making a delightful flaming parmigiano pasta with the hot pasta tossed inside a whole wheel of hard cheese. Amazing. Reserve my table. Greco certainly threw himself into his new venture. His regulars called him Rocco. Shortly after opening, he bragged of his restaurant's bounty in a local newspaper, Le Progre. He was all about Italian cuisine prepared with only fresh and homemade products, he said. He told the reporter of being born in Italy's south and about his fondness for his grandmother's cooking, which he tried to emulate for his customers. He even posed for a newspaper photograph, holding what looks to be an enormous calzone. His dream didn't last long, though, and it's not the fault of police. His restaurant failed, and this past November he returned to work at the restaurant he had left, working the night shift making pizzas. I guess he needed the dough, so to speak. That's where he was arrested by police. His pizza oven was apparently still warm when he was pinched. While his job on the run may have been a good one, his choice of a cover name was a dud. 
It was apparently the name of a known Italian criminal, and with that name screaming in the headline about his restaurant, it eventually caught the attention of Italian police. But his face didn't match that of Paolo Dimitrio, but it did match that of someone else. Comparing the man in the pizzeria to old mugshots of Greco reveal a striking resemblance. He even kept his beard. French and Italian officers worked to trace his movements, placing Greco under surveillance while his identity was probed. Italian police said he lived modestly in a small apartment in the city. Capturing mafia fugitives has grabbed headlines lately, especially last month with the arrest of Italy's most wanted man, the top Sicilian mafia boss Matteo Messino Denaro, who was caught after 30 years on the run. But let's be clear, Greco is no Messino Denaro. Despite headlines calling Greco a mafia boss, that greatly elevates his modest status. He seemed to have been a mob soldier, a hitter, which, to be frank, in the middle of a mafia war isn't all that rare. But still, if he's killed at least twice and tried two or three more, then returning him to face justice in Italy is still reason for police and prosecutors to cheer. The Indrangheta, after all, is Italy's most extensive and powerful mafia group. It operates on every continent and has strong ties to the cocaine trade connecting Europe to South America. The international cooperation for Greco's capture came through Interpol's ICANN project. Interpol is the international police agency and ICANN stands for Interpol Cooperation Against Indrangheta. The project was launched in 2002 and has so far helped arrest dozens of fugitives worldwide. Its original funding is set to expire this year I wouldn't be surprised if it was extended. Please like, comment, and share this video on social media. Subscribe if you're not already, and turn on notifications. Please tap the thanks button, it looks like this, and can be found somewhere around this video to send me a tip. Or join me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.